done on the numbers. Um, as we look through them, is this sustainable? Is there enough th sort of heft there in the numbers to sustain this kind of trajectory, Jakob? Good morning. Good morning and uh, great to be here again. Um, thank you for the, the comments. I think we, um, we're pleased with the quarter. It's, uh, in many ways, it's a continuation of what we've seen for, for a number of quarters now. Uh, good lending growth in our, in, across the Nordic uh, countries, good fee income, and uh, also um, uh, continued, um, continued uh, strong uh, loan loss impairment uh, performance. So reversals again in the quarter. Uh, so I think it's, it's been a pleasing quarter, but it's very much a continuation of what we've seen for a number of quarters. I think we're especially pleased today with the uh, capital built. Uh, we're building uh, 70 basis points of core to one in the quarter, so a very strong capital position as well. So overall, very pleased, um, but it, we, don't think it's, uh, it, we don't think there are any special uh, specials in the quarter, etc. It's a continuation of the momentum we've seen for, for a number of quarters now. Uh, you're continuing to grow despite years of negative interest rates, of course, Jacob. How much better are you getting at dealing with that? And is that the situation you assume continues, or do you see change ahead? I think it's the right question to ask. We, uh, we're obviously in a bit of a, an experiment here with negative rates for now a couple of years. Um, we, in terms of expectations, first of all, we, we, do, we don't have a view as to whether rates will, will suddenly start moving uh, in the foreseeable future. We plan our business for this interest rate environment to, to, uh, to maintain for a number of years. So uh, we're not assuming any, any help, you can say, from uh, rising interest rates. When we look at the, the way we're dealing with it, I don't think we're doing anything different uh, in recent quarters. Uh, we are continuously making sure we're there to support our customers. It drives customer activity in, in a number of areas, of course. Um, but uh, in terms of the business model, it's been, a, it's been a gradual change over the last couple of years, making sure that it's, uh, it's, um, it's still valid and still delivering uh, in, in this type of environment. So we're not expecting any major change, and that means we'll, we'll keep on working, uh, working hard on mitigating any negative side effects. I think the last time you caught up with Anna, you described yourself as being the powerhouse in fixed income commodities and currencies um, and doing really quite well. I'm looking at the breakdown in the numbers. Net trading income declined to 1.81 billion kroner from 2.14 billion kroner in the same period last year. So things not just as aggressive for you there. How is the flow? How are the clients holding up? And I suppose what we really want to know is if you are the powerhouse, are you winning market share? That's essentially important to the story, even if the number has dropped slightly. I think that's, that's the right question, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that we, we still delivered that performance. When you look at the, uh, the quarter, if you look across the board, uh, no doubt that the entire sector has had significantly lower revenues in, uh, in FIC in the, this quarter. Uh, we're actually uh, very pleased with the number we came out with. When you look at the trading income last year, uh, just be aware that our visa uh, sales gain was in our trading income last year, so actually underlying, we're, we're, we're better than last year on the trading income. Uh, Q1 this year was incredibly strong. You know that uh, across the board uh, on, on FICC. Q2, more normalized custom activity, but we're holding or gaining market share across the Nordic region, so very pleased with the performance. Can I ask you a question in relation to Nordea? They've decided they need more time to decide whether they move their headquarters. And, of course, Copenhagen is somewhere that they are perhaps considering. All of this links to banking union to some extent. Um, do you want to see the, uh, the environment that you operate in being part of banking union? Does banking union still hold the cachet despite the divergent ways we saw the Spanish and the Italian banks being dealt with recently? I guess, um, I guess there's two questions in that. In terms of Nordea, we, we have no view. Like, uh, they, they need to do what they think is sensible, and, and we'll, we'll take note of that. Uh, in terms of banking union in general, I think uh, Danske's view on banking union is positive. We think it, it, it could make sense for Denmark to be part of the banking union. Uh, we also know there's a number of, uh, of uh, things that need to be considered in terms of, 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 uh, of the Danish banking market, uh, the mortgage banking system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But... Generally, the idea of the notion of, of, of the banking union is something we're positive towards. Um, you, you mentioned the recent developments in Spain and Italy. Uh, we actually think that uh, when you look at what happened in Spain, for example, I think that's an example of, of, of the system uh, working well, um, uh, sorting out a situation before it, it, it becomes uh, critical to the system. Um, so that hasn't changed our view on the banking union. But there's a lot of analysis that needs to be done and, uh, and uh, before anyone has a real view on Denmark joining or not.
Um, your central bank is quite prolific these days in terms of uh, the missives that they're, they're sending out and the, the, the noise that they're making. They say that there's a risk, I want your reaction to this, that the industry is at risk of missing several warning signs that are pointing towards another crisis. There is a very reason to watch out for speed, blindness. What do you think that they mean by that? I mean, you've got a great story, you've raised your guidance, you've got record after record, FICC's doing well, but how aware are you? Are you speed blindness? What are the bumps out there in the road that we're not talking about? No, I, I think the central bank is raising some, uh, some, uh, some, some very central issues. Uh, we're obviously all watching the property markets, which I think is what they are mainly referring to. Uh, uh, we're all watching the property markets when you look at, at the Danish property market, which I guess is, um, is, is their main concern. Um, it has not risen to the levels that you've seen in, in, in other European uh, uh, countries. Denmark is still, uh, still has a legacy from uh, uh, sorting out the, the last financial crisis. But no doubt that especially the Copenhagen uh, property market has, uh, has had a very strong rebound. We're monitoring that very closely. Uh, we're very, very focused on our credit quality and, our sta and, and maintaining our standards. So we, we acknowledge prices have gone up, but we do not see a real bubble as such um, um, uh, emerging in, in the Danish housing market in general. But we're watching uh, any subsegments, etc. So I think it's, uh, it's uh, the right thing for them to be very vigilant. I can guarantee you we are very vigilant. We're not being complacent around these issues. Um, so we're making sure that we uh, maintain strong credit quality as we, as we grow. Jakob, just on that, on, on the regulators in Sweden and Norway, they're warning about this household debt issue. I just want to get a sense, are you stepping back a little bit? Are you getting more aggressive in terms of the terms that you use? Um, do you think this, this loan loss provision are in abnormal times? Because that's what one CEO said to me recently, they're just beyond normal. So are you stepping back? Are you taking any measures to aggressively price differently? And do you think that these uh, loan loss provisions can extend at these levels? No, there's no doubt that uh, we, we, uh, we agree that having reversals every quarter, which we've, uh, we, we continue to have on a quarterly basis, uh, in the long term, it's not a sustainable thing. Uh, banking is about taking risk in a, in a reasonable way, and that also leads to, over the cycle, to have uh, credit losses, of course. That's the banking model, and we don't think that's changed. We're in an environment right now where our clients are basically all employed. Uh, there's no unemployment in our main markets, and at the same time, they're paying close to zero interest rate. So reversalist is a natural uh, is a natural extension of that. Uh, at some point, that will come to an end, and we're very clear around that. We will see normalized uh, loan losses. We don't see that. We don't see high loan losses in, in in the foreseeable future. But at some point, we will normalize. So that's fair. In terms of household debt and our and our behavior, um, you know that our growth in Sweden and Norway has been very focused on certain segments. Where we've been focused on these association agreements. Uh, especially with the Association of Academics, as an example, in both Sweden and Norway. So we are trying to be selective in the way that we, we grow. Um, so the high growth rates are driven especially by these segments. And as a final note, uh, we, also, uh, we also tightened our lending criteria last year in both Sweden and Norway. So uh, we are very uh, focused on this, backtest all the time, etc. So, uh, but it's something to stay uh, very vigilant around.